Welcome back. Well, last week we did a video on uh, cleaning a doll and we used a Cabbage Patch doll and I got a lot of questions about what to do about the hair. Now the hair on a Cabbage Patch kit is pretty easy to deal with. It's yarn. It's just like fabric. You deal with it the way you would deal with a sweater. Okay, are you through kitty? Um, but I thought we would get into dealing with doll hair. Let's just start off generic doll hair. So when we come back, we'll get into it. All right, you good. All right, well, okay, come on, come on, come on. All right, come on, come on, I got you. All right. Did you want to be, what did, what did you want to do? Did you want to be picked up? Here is a doll. In fact, here is a doll, a very messy doll, because Audie the cat did play with this doll, didn't you? Well, that, was, that was good, yes. You just played with that doll. Because I wanted to make sure the hair was nice and messy for you. This doll was in the schoolhouse. This is a little nothing of a doll. I got this doll as, as a joke. And, of course, the people who are cleaning out the debris from the schoolhouse didn't know that and set this doll aside along with some broken porcelain and uh but you will in fact get to see a picture of this doll because i'm going to give you all the pictures and the first one is the doll as i discovered her rather like you know an archaeological adventure in situ or situ depending on how you want to pronounce it um that's our word for the day in situ. It's actually two words, I-N-S-I-T-U. Um, situ, situ comes, or situ, I've heard it situ as well, comes to us straight from Latin. And it just means in its original position. Um, easy to think of it as instead of in situ, on site. And you hear that term used a lot in archaeology when they're talking about where it is they found the artifacts or the bones. Yeah. Oh, all right, we're back again. Okay, yes, all right. So, I hauled this little thing out of the mess, washed her up, and then let Audie play with her because I actually wanted some messy hair. And he was very accommodating. He is, yes, all right. He played with her, he chewed on her hair, and he gave us quite a little mess to deal with, which is what we need in order to demonstrate. Are, are you, all right, I love you, come on, come on. Yes, all right, I can hear that you're purring. So, what do we know about this? We know this is uh, a man-made um, hair, it's plastic. Uh, this is probably saran. Most of this stuff is saran. And it's plastic doll hair that was initially um, made in the very early 60s. It became popular for dolls and has been used for less expensive dolls pretty much ever since. So what do you do when you have this mess? One, this is our first friend. This is a steel dog comb. Uh, in fact, it says hearts on it at um, the dog product company. Uh, the reason I use this is it's strong. The, the end of the teeth, the, the little teeth ends are smooth. Um, they're not jagged. Uh, it's one of the reasons the dog loved it. She felt like somebody was just coming along with little tiny fingers and scratching her back. She thought it was great. Cat likes it too. So 
It will not break off in the doll's hair. It will not make a mess. And it's pretty good about not making more static electricity on the doll. What are you doing, baby? Get out of there. Come on. Come on. All right. There we go. Good boy. I'm not refilming. This is my fifth attempt at this particular video. We're going through no matter what he does now. Next, fabric softener. Um, I'm just pouring some fabric softener into the fabric softener cap. This isn't hair. We don't need to use shampoo or conditioner or any other expensive product. We're just going to use fabric softener. And what we're going to do is just pop the dolls, the little pigtails, in the fabric softener. And now I'm just squishing it up. I have a towel here. It's a, and don't worry, it's a, it's a dirty old rag towel. So, here's our little doll now with the fabric softener all in her hair. So, we are going to start by grabbing a clump of the doll's hair, in this case, because she had two pigtails, it's very convenient. Now, we're going to start at the end of the doll's hair and work our way toward the scalp. Any of you who've ever had children with long hair, or if you've had long hair yourself and it's gotten tangled, you know that's how you untangle it. You start at the end and work your way up. There. So, now the comb is just going to slide through because of all that fabric softener in here. There we go. There's one. And we're going to do the other same thing, starting at the very ends. We start at the end, we work our way toward the scalp. All we're doing is taking out any knots and tangles. And as you can see, I don't have to fight. With the fabric softener, it just slides through. Well, it's a combination of the fabric softener and the comb. Just slides right through, no problem. There we go. Now, at this point, I can either wash the fabric softener out now if I'd like, or I can just tie it back in pigtails. And please note, I'm using, uh, this is a heavy thread. It's not exactly string, but it's somewhere between the thickness of string and the thickness of thread. So, I'm going to grab the hair pull it into its little pigtails string wrap it around and tie it off so why would I do that instead of using a rubber band which is what people ordinarily use when they tie off pigtails well for one thing it's the easiest way to do it if you were actually trying to hold the pigtail, wrap a rubber band around your hand, around the pigtail, you would find it not exactly very easy, especially since, you know, I'm not like a little kid with tiny little, little kid fingers anymore. My fingers are getting large and I wouldn't want to have to struggle through that. Also, once here, I've got the little pigtails in, it's the easiest way for me to do it. Uh, so I would strongly suggest, you know, you want to put pigtails in a doll's hair, 
do it with thread. Don't do it with rubber bands. We can replace it with rubber bands later, but for the moment, just thread. Now, when we work on Barbie hair, and we will, you're going to find that with some Barbie hairstyles, the only way to do it effectively is to use thread and not rubber bands. So now that we've got this business here, and we need to curl it. Now in this case, we probably don't. We could let this dry out and just shape it. But let's pretend we need to curl it, because I want to show you how to curl it. All right. So here's our doll hair. And let's see, what do we have here? These are permanent wave end papers. You can usually get them anywhere they sell perm rods or permanent waves. You can certainly get them at places like Sally Beauty Supply. Um, I have all of my old hair supplies in a, a large box, not hoarding. I even have my brush rollers from the 1960s. So, mm -hmm. And I still use them. Well, not the brush rollers. I, I do. I use the brush rollers on my own hair occasionally. But things like perm rods and end papers, I use them for dolls all the time. So, if you've ever done a home permanent, you know about end papers. What you do with the end paper is you are going to wrap your little section of hair, the section that you are going to roll around your perm rod, you're going to wrap it in the end paper. And the reason you're going to do it is because you want the paper to go all the way around the hair and then come up over the end. See, the little doll hair is stopping about here, but I've got this much end. So why is that? Because I'm going to start rolling the paper, not the hair. And that's going to guarantee that I catch all the little tiny bits of end hairs in here. See? It's all caught up. And if I didn't have the end paper, I would get frizzy ends um, because they wouldn't all be wrapped neatly around the perm rod. So, take out another end paper. Come on. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do the second one. And... my little string end. I probably should have cut those off so they wouldn't be in the way. Paper. Wrapping it around this lock of hair. This is the hair we're going to wrap around the perm rod. I'm wrapping the paper around. Remember, paper. And fortunately, this is nice purple, so it's going to show through. See, just empty paper before we get down to the little doll hair. So here we go. I'm wrapping the paper. Now the hair is going with it. And there we go. Now I find perm rods to be very convenient for doing doll hair like this. It's simple. It's easy. You can curl doll hair with all kinds of things. You can use um, little bits of cut drinking straws, secure it with bobby pins. Um, you can use pipe cleaners. Um, the way you use pipe cleaners is um, there was an old-fashioned curler, more from my grandmother's generation, that was very similar to a pipe cleaner. Um, you would just take the hair, wrap it around 
the curler, and, or in this case the pipe cleaner, and then fold the ends over. It would lock it in place. So many things. Um, and I've seen people get really, really creative, especially when they're trying to do the little poodle bangs on Barbies. Um, I use pipe cleaners for those. Um, but here we go. Now, so we, we've got our doll. The hair is cleaned. It's all sort of combed out. There are no more tangles. It's not fuzzy and frizzy looking. So how do we keep the style in it? Well, this is Saran. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to boil some water. We're going to do it on the stove top. We're not going to do it in the microwave. Remember, not the microwave. No, no. The reason for this is um, a microwave, uh, water in a microwave can hit temperatures higher than 212 degrees. And we don't want that. On a stove top, your water hits 212 degrees and it, the temperature doesn't increase. That's when it starts boiling and the air bubbles off and, you know. So, and we all studied that in elementary school science. So, 212 and it stops. Well, we certainly do not want to plunge this doll in 500 degree water. So, stove top only. Boiling water. We take the pot off the stove. We drop the doll's head in the boiling water. We leave it there for a minute or two. And that's called a boil perm. The plastic will heat. It will retain the curl. Okay, so by the way, that's what we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you for a moment. I'm going to deal with this because I'm not doing Unfortunately, I'm not doing this with boiling water right here, right now, because the photobomb kitty is three feet away, and I'm, can you imagine the havoc he would create? And as I said, I've been filming this over and over and over again. This is my last shot on this video. My last shot. Don't even look at me, um, because I'm not going to redo it. Whatever it is he does, whatever it is he wants, we're just going to cope with it because I'm not starting again. No, I'm not. Where are you? All right, so I'm going to deal with this, then we'll come back. Okay, we're back. Doll got her head dumped in boiling water off camera, where it's relatively safe. A couple of minutes, and I let it dry out a bit. Not a lot, because we don't really need to, uh, we don't need to wait until it's completely dry. We're just going to take this off, and there we go. See that little curl? It's completely wrapped around. Same thing with this. Cut it out. Let's get that end paper off, and here we go. So when this fully dries, we can fluff these little curls out in any little you know, baby doll style we want. And keep in mind that usually when you're dealing with dolls like this, all you have to do is just sort of, you know, spread the curls out a little tiny bit, you know, just make them look somewhat pretty or decorative. Ordinarily, you know, it's not like you have to be a hairdresser to do this. You just want them to look like pretty little curls. You can even comb them out and get them very fluffy if you want. Whatever your own taste dictates. So this is how we deal with Saran doll hair. We clean the doll. Uh, that's number one because you want that hair to be clean. Then we use the fabric softener and we use that just like a hair conditioner. Dump the doll's head in fabric softener. Then we take our comb, comb it through. The fabric softener will lubricate the hair and encourage the process of combing the tangles out. We start from the ends, the very ends, and work our way closer to the scalp. You know, you don't want to start at the top and start raking through because if you put that kind of stress on this saran, what will happen 
is you'll pull it, you'll stretch it, you'll break it, and it'll just be a worse mess than you started with. So start at the ends, work your way toward the scalp, get your end paper, roll up your your hair. I These are old perm rods. Um, everybody's got old perm rods. Well, everybody I know has old perm rods somewhere. You don't even need old perm rods. You can roll it up on a pipe cleaner and just wrap the ends around to secure it. Drop the doll in boiling water for a minute or two. Wait until it's you know, partially dry. Take it out. Done. Very, very easy and straightforward. Now, this works on doll hair that, um, it's manufactured doll hair, Saran. Always test your doll unless you know that this is going to work on your doll. And this technique works on, um, let me see, I can pretty much say with confidence every 11 and uh, the 11 and a half inch fashion dolls, which is Barbie size fashion dolls, um, pretty much works on all of them. When we go over to the 12 inch fashion dolls, the Tammy, there were Tammy clones, the Horseman dolls. They, um, Patty Duke doll was one of them. Mary Poppins doll was another. They have an H on the back of their necks. Does not work with those dolls. So don't try it if you have a Horseman doll. But if you don't know what kind of doll you have, test it in an inconspicuous area before you go ahead because we don't want you ruining your doll. But should work on most uh, fashion dolls from the late 50s, early 60s. And most modern dolls as well. This, As you can see, this is a very modern doll. Get them clean. Oh, it'll work on um, those little, what are those? My Little Pony dolls, things like that. Other toys, doesn't have to be dolls. You know, if, if you've got like a horse mane, you can do that. Um, this will work on all kinds of things because remember, it's not real hair, it's just plastic. Now, when, uh, at some point in the future, we are going to take a look at working with mohair. Now, these are earlier dolls. These are dolls from the 40s, the 50s. The earliest Barbies had mohair. Mohair is real wool. It's um, you know, sheep hair from little, cute little lambies and, or goats. Maybe it's goats. Maybe cute little goats. Some sort of, you can tell I grew up in the city. I wouldn't know a lamb from a goat from a, a mountain lion. Anyway cute little things with fur. We're going to work with mohair. Mohair in some ways is very much easier. In some ways it's more challenging. But we started with Saran and this will work on most of your modern dolls from 1960 to the present. This will cover the vast majority. But like I say, we're going to do some work with some older dolls as well because mohair, well, you'll see when we get there. It can be fun, but it can have you just tearing your hair out. So that's our sort of quick and easy fix the doll hair video. We have fabric softener, a steel comb, end papers, rollers, boiling water. It's all we need. All right. So good luck and let me know how you make out with your own dolls. And I'm still up to my eyeballs in projects. So we have another project weekend to look forward to. And I have a few coming up. And then hopefully we'll track back into our normal format once we get some of the projects out of the way. All right. Terrific. I will see you all tomorrow. Stay tuned because you're going to see the pictures of the doll, what she looked like when she was, you know, hauled out of the dirt, and what I have been able to make of 
her little hair. I'll show you a picture of that when it dries and I fluff it out and make it look pretty, sort of. This is not a beautiful little doll. There's only so much you can do. All right, stay tuned for the pictures and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you.